Okay, so this is my virtual world deck profile. Um, this is the deck I'm currently playing at the moment, and I'm gonna go through my current build uh, and later, obviously, my, my optimum build because I am missing a few cards here and there. So I've piloted this at three locals so far. Um, one was a bigger event at Dragon Town in Centurion, and I did reasonably well in the three events prior. And then I took first place at, at Dragon Town. Um, but I had two two quite tough matchups uh, at Dragon Town, which were Andre with Dino and then Krish with Zu Lich, I think. Okay, so so let's get into the decklist itself. First off, we have uh, three times Lulu. Obviously, Lulu is the best card in the deck. Um, there's a reason why it's spiked to what I think twenty five thirty dollars at the moment. It's pretty much uh, a double rotor. So one of the plays that you can do is if you don't have any spells and traps, if you just have monsters, which comes up quite often, is, um, and yeah, if you don't have like Haldun and that kind of thing, is you use uh, Lulu to target a monster, you send Chuchi to the graveyard, you search Kowloon, and then you activate Kowloon to, to set, uh, to activate Chuchi. So, I mean, you lose the search ability, so you need to think about whether you actually want to do that. Um, but in a lot of situations, that comes in very, very heavy. Then we have 3 Cent Linden. Um, I've actually overlooked the importance of this card in the deck. It's actually uh, one of the only ways that you can go double BFP. Like without this, I've tried and, and it's fairly difficult to do that. Um, you really need the level 6 non you know, on the field. Um, so, so yeah, and then lastly, like Overlaying for rank 6 is quite strong. I mean, Fan Fan is strong, and I'm gonna cover it a little later. But okay, then we have 3 and Paolo. Paolo is basically our our main extender. The idea is that you go, you make a Synchro 9, potentially you make 2, you go into BFD, you activate Call Light, and then if you get a hand trap like Gamad, Nibiru, etc., then you have Laolo to continue and go into. Tal Castle to make the second BFT. So, also, this is like a really good recovery card in turn two. Yeah, it's, it's quite a strong one. Its defense comes up as well, and like I said, you overlay for the rank six as well. Um, then we have three times GG. In my opinion, this is the second most important card. Yes, Lao Lao is basically your second BFT, it's also your recovery play, but GG. Just to add you one of your banished or or engraved BWs back to your hand. Now that alone means that you can play next time. And in fact, some of the games that have been a lot tighter or I've lost is because I didn't search GG and use his effect. The only issue is that obviously he's a level three non-tuner, which which is important. It actually is useful, but sometimes when you want to go for like Linlin. Missing the three levels, you don't really want to use Chuchi in a graveyard on that. You want to save it for later. It becomes a little bit tight, a little bit complex. GG, don't underestimate it, especially if you're going up against BW. Maybe hit this, like if you can ash it or something, that's gonna hurt the player quite a bit. Yan Yan, obviously, times three, really good card, special summon extender. When banished, you get to shuffle something back, it banishes itself, so it's really good to set up uh, Chuchi. Even if you just don't activate the shuffle effect, you just send it, you just banish it and leave it there as fodder. That's quite strong. Okay, then I play 3 times Danger Turtle because I mean, it gets over Zoo stuff. Upper Loser kind of like really hurts the deck. So it gets over Upper Loser, uh, it gets over, you know, Herald of Perfection and Herald of Ultimateness. So I, I prefer maining it than siding it because it's a lot more versatile than, for example, Nibiru. But there are matchups where I probably want to switch this up for Nibiru. Okay, then we have 3 times Gamma, uh, high impact hand trap. Gamma is one of the only cards that can help you defend against Ash. The hand traps that hit you fairly hard are Ash, obviously Gamma, I think Ghost Bell, right? Ghost Bell from. Oh, Vanishing, yeah. So Ghost Bell as well. So uh, early on, if you don't have monsters on field, which generally when you start in your play, you don't, Gamma can actually defend you against those hand traps. Also putting um, another level 6 in terms of driver on field is helpful, makes makes the combo a lot easier. But if you can't and you can just go into Omega, that's a strong play. You're ripping a second card out of there just for free. 
So yeah, definitely Kemam in the main. Spells, we have 3 chance Kowloon. Kowloon's really strong, like really really, really strong. Uh, I think VW gets a stronger continuous spell or trap in the future. I mean, this will really really shine, but in fact at the moment it's quite strong. This activates it face up. So yeah, so 3 times that. 3 times Klinglong, obviously, it's a such a negates most the effects. Uh, 3 times desires, um, because you're playing 3 puppies of almost everything, and there's really no one integral combo piece, you can play desires, it's fine 99% of the time. Uh, just getting the plus 2 is important, or, or beating the ash is quite important. Foolish goods, times 2. Foolish goods is a play starter, you send Klinglong, and then banish that, and then add your Lulu and then you go off. I'm not playing 3 because 3 is kind of tricky, like if you draw 2 of them you don't really have a second target because you're going to send the King Longs off of the VWs anyway. And I don't really like the Metal Force Fusion option because then you, it's just a brick, like if you draw Metal Force Fusion then it's something that's stuck in your hand that you're unable until you can discard it, which is ridiculous. But yeah, I mean I, I guess there is merit in terms of discarding it for like coral dragon and a drawing and those kinds of things so so i mean there is pros and cons i prefer to just play the two play it clean and then take it from there we have one times upstart uh, playing 39 cards is better than 40 so yeah so one times call by the grave so call by is obviously a run uh, ideally you know if it was on three would be fantastic but he's just as strong as he used to be which is obviously you're not going to drop all the time um, but if you do draw it, there is a quite a number of hand traps that the deck suffers to. So Ash is a, is a problem, Bell is a problem, Droll is a problem. So using Call of Duty to stop those uh, will definitely will help. So yeah, so that's in. Then you have one times tactics. Uh, I prefer to play three, I only have one at the moment, so that is that one. Uh, if you have three, definitely play three. Uh, teleport, obviously summons Psychic from deck. So. The thing is, teleport is not necessarily needed for the deck. Uh, ideally, if it was on three, two or three, it would be much better. But the fact that you can summon a Shuna in terms of Lulu or a non-Shuna in terms of Nyan Nyan, that is quite important. Obviously, you put a play starter on field and also to make sure that you have either a Shuna or non-Shuna that you need for your combo and like fix your combo basically. So that's important. You have three times Chuche. You have to play three. It's it's one of the big interruptions in the deck. Also, the level modulation is very important as well, so that's quite good. Then we have one time driver obviously for your gammas, and then into extra deck, one time Shenshen. You only really need one. Summon itself back. All three decks of Shenshen is really really strong. So if you have the macro on field, you have uh, the return to grave effect. The return to grave comes up quite often if you are returning like Shen um, Yan Yan or if you're returning something from your opponent in Spanish that they would be able to use. And then obviously the special summon effect is also quite quite good. Then we have uh, one times Vermilion. Vermilion is probably the best extra deck monster other than VFT in the deck because you can cycle it and it's not once per turn. So you can obviously bring it back for that cloud, pop a card, or make it pop a card, bring it back for cloud, pop a card which gives you quite a bit of advantage. Also, when it's popped, you can add a tuna to your hand. So that's also useful in, in continuing your, your combo. Then you have one times croc. Obviously, you draw a card for every non tuners uh, It's a big pop. That's quite important. Like, people overlook the fact that it is an interruption. It costs two cards, so it's not ideal. But if you have nothing else, if you can't get into VFD, you can end up croc and chuche, and that's two interruptions. So then I'm playing double cloud castle only because I don't have the Yangs in. Also, maybe the Gaia Charger. And then one times Omega for obviously the Gamma play. Yeah, one times Juju. So, I actually quite love this card because it can't be destroyed by uh, card effects or targeting, I believe. Um, while you control uh, monsters with the same type and attribute in the graveyard. But also it can send the card, so not destroy, send anything face up, face down to the graveyard by banishing two. So both of those effects are relevant and it's a non tuner level 6 so and it's a virtual world so you can change this level the tree tree you can pop a card overlay you can pop a card synchro with this so it's quite a good uh, overall uh, level 6 option okay then we have uh, one times coral calls like stupidly strong draw a card when it's used 
and then also you can pop a card, uh, any card, that's good. Sometimes charge warrior, draw a card and summon, and then you can attack all monsters. I haven't really used that effect, but maybe it'll come up. Even when I played Utopia Beyond, I haven't really used that. So this is probably your second boss monster in the deck. Yeah, I've won quite a few games with Zeus on board, so that's really strong. Two times Calamities. Obviously, two full combo is double calamities, um, so you need to play two at least. You could potentially play three, but I think that's kind of overkill. Here, yeah, one times Fan Fan. Fan Fan is also, I think, underrated a lot. It's basically Ice Dragon's present in, in uh, X Wave. So, detach two, banish a face up monster, and banish a card in the graveyard. And then, obviously, attack. And then, if you have Charge Warrior, you can uh, Zeus, which is like unbelievably strong. I mean, you got rid of two, two threats, basically you're attacked for some damage and you have Zeus for follow-up play next turn or for follow-up interruption next turn but yeah I'm, I'm not playing charge warrior I might need to make some space or test it out but I, I don't really I prefer to go the level 3 the rank 3 route and you have one times downward so a downward is obviously to overlay over Jar Jar which I'm playing at one as well time is basically uh, a drag him out and yeah so you can activate the uh, Jar Jar Banish the monster, overlay down it, and then overlay Zeus. And then you have, if you use the effect, am I right? Let me just double check. Yeah, so if you use the effect, then you have two activations. If you didn't use the effect, you have you still have two, but you could potentially have three if you destroy if a card is destroyed, you can attach to Zeus. Am I right? Yep. Uh, no, the other way around. You have one, and then you can have a second if you attach. Okay, then side deck. We have uh, three times Nibiru. Actually, I don't really like Nibiru at the moment because a lot uh, within my area in, in Gauteng, uh, Johannesburg, most of the decks around here are control based. There's a lot of Zoo. There's a lot of uh, there's a bunch of Dogmatica. There's uh, yeah a handful of like a lot of slower control decks, Altergeist, etc. So because of that, like Nibiru is just not miss, not really strong. However, like for example, when you play online, you know, with the other regions and stuff, you get a lot of decks that are combo based where Nibiru would make it quite hard. So it's a bit of a, a toss up. Playing the Nibiru uh, just depends on, I guess, the format of that tournament. On the side, uh, I would probably sub this out if it's a control based tournament. A more meta and control based format, I would go for belts, three belts instead. But yeah. And we have three times draw. John is really strong. If it's VW, if it's Stritron, kind of hits Dragmatica as well. So, yeah, two times Moon. I might play three, you know, dropping like one of the Nibiru's or something. Moon is really strong because you can play, you can use it going first or second. So, if you go first, you set it, and then when you normal summon, you just flip that face down if it's like Zoo or something. And then it's very difficult for them to play. If it's going second, you can just flip down like a threat, or you can bait a threat. So let's say there's a savage on the field, or there's a Zeus. You can activate target the Zeus, and then now they need to activate it, or they just lose that effect for that turn. It just shuts down stuff. So yeah, Moon is actually like one of my favorite spells of all time. So I'm quite happy that it's in the, the meta at the moment. So yeah, uh, three times Impan, no shut down calamities. Yeah, basically that's about it. And then my back row removal, I play one times Duster, one, uh, one times Reboot, two times Twister. Yep. Okay, and let's talk about the deck as a whole. So, BW as a whole is, in my opinion, is the best deck of the format, simply because, yes, it makes Calamities, which is a really good boss monster, but on its way to Calamity, it does a hell of a lot of stuff that interacts with your opponent. So for example, let's look at Infernoble. Infernoble combos, it's very resilient, it has a lot of extenders, etc. But you are comboing within your side of the field until you get Calamity or whatever your end board is. And then you pass turn. Whereas with VW, especially if you're like going second, you are interacting with your opponent's field on an ongoing basis. So you are popping cards, you are sending cards to the graveyard, you are trying to banish stuff, etc. And then you are making BFD, which is so much stronger. Uh, if, for example, you can't interact with your opponent's field, you are drawing cards. So, in both cases, you are getting quite a bit of advantage. It's like, these two cards uh, drawn and maybe uh, GG and phase to add, so that's plus three in that turn, 
or if you go in second you are popping potentially three cards and then making bft and so on so that's like that's fantastically strong and i've been saying this for a while that a lot of the decks meta decks even when like orcas was like meta and stuff it was doing a lot of stuff that actually didn't interact with your opponents it's basically as soon as you see an archetype that has the majority of monsters saying special summon uh it's good oh i can special summon this and then special summon that and then constantly and link and so on yes you're extending constantly but you're not actually doing anything until you hit your end goal whereas vw actually does do something it interacts with your opponent which is crazy so like a good example of this is let's say you you go coral into vermilion into cloud into vermilion so coral you discard a card you pop a card into vermilion you banish a tuner pop a card into cloud bring back vermilion banish something pop a card and that's three pops before or bft it's very strong i'm also main decking like some really good tools that are out floodgates and mine and so for example we see chuchu means that you can main deck out mine um, it's searchable with kowloon and some of the monsters so that's fantastic and then also like if you're playing against zoo for example and they have you know zeus on field you can activate king long banish something negate the zeus continue playing and that's main deck it's just like it's almost like a free effect because it really the effects that you want from um king long is the banish at clan you know the, the rota the fact that it can negate a monster for the turn is is really really good really good okay and then uh, also king long especially negating up loser because up loser is like an auto win or other decks against the deck because it's predominantly monsters but the fact that you have an out in chuche and king long that's strong okay and then if you throw in the fact that it, the extra deck monsters from the archetype are quite strong i mean one is a send to grave protects itself you know level six synchro and the other one is ice dragon's prison basically and then if it's pop special summon two from deck that's phenomenal and then the big monster is macrocosmos that can special summon itself i mean there's very few archetypes that can really say they have that kind of resources at their disposal in the main archetype itself probably the one thing that can make them better is getting more cards i mean you could say this for any archetype but really for them it's just a matter of having more options so yeah just having like a few more monster options might be great um having uh definitely having a, an extra another trap if they they make a new trap for vw that will be extremely strong because there's a bunch of combos where you need to send the trap to grave and you don't want to send two chuches you know so yeah so having extra resources would be good in the future i'm happy that the, that new monster is coming out so that will be quite impactful to the deck Okay, and then some miscellaneous notes. You, you, the reason why you play three of everything is simply because you need all of them to do your combo as many as possible of the VWs in your hand, in your opening hand to play. So, I mean, if you have four, you have. If you have five, you're still happy as long as you can normal summon. So, you want to see as many of them as possible, and you're not playing three because of desires. You're playing three because you want three of everything. If you look at every single one, Lulu obviously best card in the deck. You want three of them. Then, then one three because of the effect, the dump effects, not because of necessarily the level six, but the fact that it's level six is good. Uh, Lao Lao is obviously a recovery. GG is obviously next turn play. And then uh, Yan Yan, though. Yan Yan's the one that one of the cards that I was thinking of dropping to two, but you can't. It is simply because if you normal summon Yan Yan, you have a target, and that's what you want. Like between Lulu, GG, and Yan Yan, now you have targets. To, act, to start the effect of, uh, to, or to target to activate the effects and then go combo from there. So that's quite important. Uh, I'm not playing a hell of a lot of hand traps. I mean, you could play maybe three more if you cut down a few cards, but really the, the aim is not necessary to stop your opponent. It's more to play through your turn because in your turn, you can break your board. Stopping your opponent is fantastic. I mean, inevitably but being able to break your opponent's border and end on something you know substantial is, is what this deck really is, is known for or is good at 
Okay, people, so that's my uh, VW deck profile. If you guys like it, please like, subscribe, and comment. And also, just on top of that, I'm just starting out my channel. People, I need as all the likes and subscribes possible. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, so please do. Please subscribe, please like, and definitely share my videos. And let me know if anything that I can improve, improve because I definitely like to, to get better.